Welcome to Black Talk Radio, hosted by Kristen Ayana. Listen as we discuss the latest in Black culture, Black news, and Black entertainment. What's good, y'all? It's your girl, Kristen Ayana, and welcome back to Black Talk Radio, where we discuss the latest in Black culture, Black news, and Black entertainment. Now, I'm very excited because we have somebody very special in the building with us today. Honey baby. Mm. Honey baby. Mm. (laughs) So, of course, I want to thank you so much for being here. And can you just tell us, like, for those who may or may not know who you are, when you start getting into music and all of those things? I am Honey Baby. I am a Scorpio. (laughs) And I've been doing music since 2019. Wow. Yeah. So, like, you know, you mentioned you've been doing music since 2019. So, like, how did that form? Like, did you start out, like, writing? Were you, like, doing covers? What was that experience like? Um, So, I got into music when I was really young because my daddy. <laughs> shout out to Big PB. Um, and then, like, I told myself when, like, I graduated high school, I was going to take music serious. Mm-hmm. So, I got my heart broken. And then I wrote a song. And then I was like, I'm going to drop it to be petty. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> Were you, like, nervous about dropping your music at first? Like, what was that experience like? I was scared as fuck. Can I curse on you? Yeah. I was scared as fuck. I was scared as a motherfucker. But when I had did, like, the snippets and stuff, I got mm-hmm. really good feedback. So I wasn't nervous after that, but I was nervous. Shit. Oh, my God. Mm. I was shaking in my boots. My heart went to my coochie. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you dropped it. You kept going out. Look at you. So it was definitely meant to be. And I heard you're from Jersey, right? Big Jersey. Yeah, I'm from Jersey too. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from <laughs> Union though, North Jersey. How about right. you? I'm from Asbury, but yeah. I lived in Elizabeth for a few years. Oh, okay. So I mean, this is you're probably gonna be a little biased to my next question, but South Jersey or North Jersey? I'm from Central Jersey, so neither. <laughs> uh, okay. Some people say Central Jersey doesn't exist. It does, though, because you got the top and the bottom, and it's the middle. There's okay. always a middle of something. It's never no here or there. It's the middle so what was your experience like, of course, growing up um, in Asbury and just being from there? Ghetto is hell. <laughs> Ghetto is hell. Um, I did move around a lot, though. Mm-hmm. Like I moved around a few times, but I always ended up right back in Asbury because my grandmother lives there. Mm-hmm. Um, and she never moving out of that damn house. So, but I mean, it was really ghetto, very fun, Mm -hmm. very dramatic, dramatic, dramatic as fuck, very, (laughs) 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 one of them, it was one of them. Yeah. But I feel like it's, you know, of course where you're from always shapes you. Yeah. As far as, like, who you are today, so. I wouldn't change where I'm from. I right. love where I'm from. Right, right, right. What's yeah. your favorite your favorite food spot out there? My favorite food spot? Mm-hmm. Um, The spot, because they got good chicken parms or medicios, because mm-hmm. they got the best pizzas and the best chicken cheesesteaks and the best <laughs> cheesesteaks. Yep, and they, they fucking slices are, like, fucking the size mm. of my fucking head. And I got a big ass head. Them slices are big as hell. And they crispy. Okay, okay, okay. We like that. We like that. That mm-hmm. that sounds like a good bang for your buck. Yup. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with you being from Jersey and everything, um, the Jersey music scene is, like, really taking off right now. We got, like, a bunch of dope artists coming out of Jersey. So, of course, like, how does that make you feel? Because I know, I feel like Jersey, we're slept on sometimes. We are. Like, when I was in middle school and, like, high school, there was nobody from Jersey mm-hmm. coming out. Everybody that's from Jersey is old as fuck. Mm, like, yeah. So, I mean, it feels really good. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable okay. that we're starting to get a little bit more recognition. Because we were slept on, and, bitch, we lit, too. Yeah. What the fuck? We lit. Everybody's like, New York, New York. Okay, but what about Jersey? What about Jersey? New York, Philly, New York, LA, New York. Now, what about Jersey? Big Jersey. We got something, too. Okay, now everybody want to take the Jersey clubs. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. It's really become so commercialized. Like, wow. Like, I don't know. Like, a part of me is happy because it's like, okay, we're getting put on the map in a sense. But also, it's just like let's get the credit though like that's yeah. my thing like i feel like we're not getting credit for it if that makes sense we're not it's all given to philly yeah like the rocking your hips and this and that like it did not come from y'all 
No, y'all got good cheese sticks, but y'all not rocking y'all hips. <laughs> like, relax, take down. Okay, honey, said it. So y'all better listen up. Now, I want to get into your project. Three words, eight letters. Mm-hmm. Um, Super, mm-hmm. super duper dope project. Thank I love you. it. Can you just talk to us about, you know, what you were feeling when you created some of those songs on that project or just the project as a whole? Um, Well, a lot of it is like, well, the whole project really is about romantic relationships, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it was all different types of emotions, like trouble, trouble wasn't necessarily about a person, but mm-hmm. like, I was tired of the bullshit, <laughs> fuck, right. and then like Poseidon, I was just in a really good mood when mm-hmm. I had did that, and touching was like, <sighs> that's one of my favorites, uh, like, yeah, 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 I really like that. Um, touching definitely was, definitely was a vibe. Like, I remember that session like it was yesterday. That was a fucking vibe. Trauma is sad as hell. Mm -hmm. Woo! That one, boy. And, um, get your lick back. That one is, yeah, that. I think that's actually like the first video I saw of you, like on Instagram. It was to that song, I think. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who is this? That, yeah. Away, you know? yeah, I really, I really love that one. Thank you, thank you. Shout out to Corte and Rico. <laughs> um, yeah, get your lick back definitely was like, bitch, I'm about to spin the fucking block. Yeah. Like, that's what, yeah. So, I mean, the vibe really is three words, eight letters. Like, I love you, but I fucking hate you. Mm. You know? Like, I definitely feel like a lot of people can relate to that, especially in the era of, like, relationships and dating. It's so many crazy things that happen, you know, to people when they are experiencing love. So, <laughs> I feel like you definitely broke it, broke it down in that project. I'm done with love. Oh, you it's are so disgusted. That actually was one of my questions because I'm like, I know a lot of the songs and up on the project deal with like love and relationships. So I want to know, like, what has your experience been like, like with dating in the industry recently, <clears throat> or just what? What's your mood right now? I haven't dated in the industry yet. Mm-hmm. That just scares me. It's mm. too fucking small, and these niggas act like bitches. And then like my dating life in general. Is dead as hell right now. I just had so many bad experiences. Mm-hmm. Men turned me off. Mm. Like, I'm completely turned off. Makes my coochie cringe. Makes my coochie go like this. <laughs> like, it makes my coochie go like this. Like, I'm just not with the shit. I can't do it. I feel, I feel you. I mean, I also feel like right now, like, you're just really, it seems like you're on a good path and you're really focused. Yeah. So I think maybe it's just not the time. No, men take up too much of your time. They're distractions. They're too possessive, too controlling, just too ilk. <laughs> like, I'll be my own man. I'm cool. Um, um, easy. Easy on it. <laughs> you just not, you just not feeling I'm it. I'm not you, feeling it. You just Mm-mm. not feeling it. I mean, I honestly can respect it. I feel like we all go through that point in time where we kind of just like want to be by ourselves and honestly i feel like that's good like we should have those experiences yeah like i would like to be in love Mm -hmm. but love just ain't written in my book right now Mm. like to be booed up and doing this and that it's just not my vibe honestly that's fair i could respect it i get it girl trust (laughs) i'll lay up with some money i like george washington benjamin franklin all them dead presidents (laughs) So, I always like to ask my guests, you know, as far as recording their music and, like, being in the studio. Because I know every artist has something they need with them in order to record. I know I know a <laughs> bunch of artists that record in the dark. What? This one girl told me, like, she has to have a blanket on. So, okay. everyone has their own thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what is it like, you know, as far as recording with you or your studio sessions? A bottle of Hennessy. Mm. Some pineapple juice. Or some fruity juice, pink lights. Otherwise, I become a bitch. Um, and yeah, just good vibes, and that's it. But I have to have Hennessy. Like mm. I have to have Hennessy. I'm, I'm not a dark looker girl. What? Don't you not... mean tequila? Yes. E, you scare me. <laughs> you scare me. That was dangerous. Everybody thinks Hennessy is dangerous, but like, mm-hmm. it don't really like. I don't. I don't know. It's like. I feel like after I drink it, I just feel like it's so heavy on my chest. Like, that's really how I feel. With the tequila, it's more so, like, smooth. 
Tequila get me fucked up. <laughs> Hennessy does not get me fucked up. So you could focus more. Yes, like okay. Hennessy just makes me ew. Tequila makes me real. <laughs> And I don't want to be round. Like I don't want right. to be Right, we got we got to work. We got to get get in the zone. So yeah, okay. like it's I just feel that feel more that. relaxed and tequila like a um. <clears throat> they want to party with some tacos. Like <laughs> how cool. Uh uh-uh. uh. Now, as far as like people being in the studio with you, because I know a lot of your songs are really vulnerable. Um. So, do you like people around? Do you like to be alone for the most part? Like you and just the engineer. Like, what is that like? Oh, I don't give a fuck. Mm. I'm too. I'm such an open book, and I talk a lot of shit regardless. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You want to sit? Whoever there, whoever Ooh, there. Just be prepared for this fucking energy that's about to be bouncing off the fucking walls. <laughs> shit, cause I'll be bouncing. Ping, ping, ping. So have okay. you ever had an experience where, like, you were in the studio and, like, you were, you know, expressing yourself and, like, someone felt a certain type of way? No. Mm-mm. Okay. Because anybody I'm talking shit about is not going to be in my studio session. Because mm. men disgust me. <laughs> you don't got to be in my place of work. Making my coochie train. That's fair. That's fair. Now, as far as, you know, like, you making songs, um, um, and maybe it involves, like, a particular love interest of the past, Has they have they ever, like, hit you up? Like, yo, you wrote this song about me? Mm-hmm. And, and I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had somebody try to take a song that I made about them and, like, remix it. A remix is crazy. Yeah. Obsessed. Too much. <laughs> But yeah, I have definitely had people hit me up about songs. And I have people hit me up about songs thinking it's about them and it's not about them. Mm. Like, but. But if the shoe fits. Wear it. Put that motherfucker on tied up <laughs> tight and woke. Because fuck. Facts, facts. Shit. For sure. Now, I know you recently opened up for Kaylani. <laughs> <laughs> Who my nail broke when we not looking like that? <laughs> So can you just tell us everything about that experience? Cause we we gonna, we want to know like how were you feeling? We know you love Kaylani. Oh, I say it eight times, <laughs> eight times. Um, well when I actually got to like speak to her and like chop it up with her, I fucking mm-hmm. cried. Mm-hmm. And her face is so fucking embarrassed and like, ugh. But I like really got to express to her like mm-hmm. the things that she's done for me with her music. And, like, how much her story means to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I really just got to chop it up and express myself to her. So, that was cool. So, then when I got on the fucking stage, she's like, come on. And I'm like, oh. She's like, let's go. And they're like, oh. And I just went numb. Like, my whole body was just numb. But, like, in the best way possible. Like, I had too much emotions running through my fucking body. I was on 10 all night. Mm-hmm. And then me and my best friend cried in the bed later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was amazing. She's amazing. I love that. I love that you got to have that experience. Um, I always like to ask artists, as far as, like, performing goes, when you perform, like, how how do you feel? Like, I know, like, are you nervous? Like, some artists say it's, like, a rush that they get. So, like, what is it like for you? The first 30 seconds, my coochie's in, my heart is in my coochie. <laughs> my coochie's in my heart. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> But after that, it's like, all right, they like me. I'm lit. I'm outside. Like, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. But it definitely is nervous. Like, that was, like, made me really nervous at first. Mm-hmm. When I got on stage and, like, they were just making a lot of noise, I was like, okay, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I can do this. There's a lot of motherfuckers out there. Mm. They was outside. <laughs> they was out. I was like, what the fuck? fuck that I get myself into why did I sign up for this but, but you pushed through and you did a good job so it was hot hell on that mama it was like a song on that stage mm. oh my god thank god for that wig glue because my wig would have slid right off but it was secured oh it was secured yeah. that, that tastes is trap glue yeah <laughs> that glue. Nah, nah I love that I think that's dope and I'm glad that you really got to meet her um is there anyone else like musically that you you really have been drawn to that has been Drake in- Drake. Oh uh, yeah, I love Drake. He's dope. I, I recently, I recently went to his concert and it was good. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, he had fucking Peter Pan flying. Around I know. And shit. Yeah, this motherfucker. Yeah. Nah, Drake is dope. I mean, honestly, I could see a Honey and Drake collab. Right? Yeah. It's like OVO gang. Like I, my name was OVO for years. Really? Like before it was It's Honey Baby, I was Twenty Six OVO. Wow. And everybody was calling me Twenty Six OVO. Like, Drake and Kehlani do it for me. Mm. They 
Do it for me, boy. We're going to manifest that Kehlani mm-hmm. collab. That Kehlani collab, you close. I manifested Kehlani. Yeah. I manifested Drake. I manifested it. Yeah, that's dope. I love mm-hmm. that. Um, They're definitely, and I feel like, especially like your voice with like their type of vibe, especially because Drake, you don't see like Drake collab with a lot of R&B girls, but I can definitely see you guys for sure. Mm-hmm. You hear that, Aubrey? <laughs> I'm on that ass, Mr. Graham. <laughs> sure is. Yep, Jimmy. <laughs> Now, you know, just as far as, like, being an artist in the R&B genre or just being a singer, what are your thoughts on people saying that, like, R&B is dead? Dick eating. <laughs> they want us to sound like the 90s mm. or the 2000s, but the 2000s didn't sound like the 90s, and the 90s didn't sound like the 2000s. The 80s didn't sound like the 90s, and the 90s didn't sound like the 80s. So I don't... Fuck me, we gotta sound like that. And it's just like, y'all are only basing it off of what y'all are hearing. There's so many artists out here right now. Like, mm. eat a dick, please. It's just dick eating. There's so many good artists out here. And R&B is not dead. R&B can never die. Because without hip hop, without R&B, there's no hip hop. So, <laughs> eat that one. Yeah, because look at all the samples in hip hop that sample like R&B songs. So, I definitely, definitely feel you on that. Rhythm and blues. <laughs> Where, where do you think hip-hop came from? Rhythm and blues. So, everybody just need to relax. Pipe down. Pipe, Pipe down. down. Now, we about to play a little game. I love games. So, I know you love Kehlani, right? So, we're going to do a little Kehlani trivia. Okay. And see what you know. I mean, I feel like you're going to get all of them, right? <laughs> based Just based off of me, you know, looking at your socials, your tweets. I feel like you know this girl like the back of your hand. That's it's sick. It's honestly sick. But I just thought this would be, you know, a fun little test. Okay. So, the first question. Mm-hmm. What's Kehlani's zodiac sign and birthday? Um, April 24th. Mm-hmm. I think she's a Taurus. Yep. Yeah. That's right. It's crazy because Kehlani has the same birthday as my best friend. That's how I always remember. I'm screaming. Yeah. I don't know how I remembered her birthday. Well, I feel like that that was a good one. That was a good one. But she always talking about being a Taurus. So. Yeah, she does. I feel like she says that She's a lot, too. talking about her damn uh, zodiac sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what was Kehlani's first mixtape? Cloud 19. Mm-hmm. I remember that, but I feel like I didn't start listening to her until maybe the mixtape after that with that song. You Should Be Here? Yeah, You Should Be Here. Yeah, I didn't really start listening to her until that. I was listening to her before she dropped that mixtape, mm. before she dropped Cloud 19. How did you find out about her? on twitter randomly one day Mm. on fucking twitter randomly and she had this song called anti-summer love and Mm -hmm. i was like oh my god i love this song and then she just started doing like started dropping little songs here and there and she was like on social media a lot at that time Mm -hmm. and she was on vine a lot and Mm. i just was like oh my god i love this bitch (laughs) like i love this bitch i don't know and then she would talk about like a lot of the things that she went through mm-hmm. and she was just so open when like she mm. first started before social media started social media on her. Right, right, right. So I don't know. And then she had all the tattoos. She's a bad bitch. I, <laughs> I love me some gay boy. Shit. Yeah, she's dope for sure. Okay, and the next one is where is Kaylani from? Oakland. Mm-hmm. Oakland. Bay, Cali- Bay Area. Oakland, California. I feel like she says that too. I feel like everyone, everyone knows that one, Loki. She moves like she's from the Bay Area. She has this little Bay Area Yeah, dance. they have that vibe. You can definitely tell when people are from the Bay and not from LA. Yeah. Like, two very different. She's very Oakland. Yeah, for Very sure. Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last one, what label did Kalani sign to in 2015? Eleven. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which brings me... <laughs> Which brings me to my next question, something I want to talk about. Um, You recently signed with Atlantic. Congratulations. Thank you. So can you just talk to us, you know, about your team there um, and how how it was, you know, signing with them and how did you feel? Well, before I signed with them, mm-hmm. it was just me and Mac, mm-hmm. like, just making moves and doing what we needed to do. And then it kind of, like, happened randomly. Mm. Like, it was just like, we were in the car, went to the studio one day, and he was like, yeah, we might have a meeting with Atlantic. I'm like, what the fuck you talking about? The fuck? You talking about? <laughs> he just said it so 
<laughs> yeah, like just so like, yeah, you know, we might have a meeting with Atlantic. And I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck you talk about? <laughs> so um we went to Atlantic and we met with James mm-hmm. and we went with James to Atlantic and then we all sat down and I played them some music and then I got signed like <laughs> a couple of weeks later. So it went really well. Um and then like the team that they curated for me, mm-hmm. um, I really do love them. They're fire. They get the things done, but it's really Mac that does mostly everything for me. Mm-hmm. Like he's big dog manager. Like, okay, let's give it up. Let's give it up for Mac. He's here in the building too. Y'all can't see him, but <laughs> we love to give people their flowers while they yeah. can still smell them. We make sure I have everything, everything I want. That's good. I think that's I honestly I really love that though because I feel like, you know, it's great to, you know, be signed and have that support from a label, but the fact that you have, you know, your manager before that and you know like, okay, this is one person that no matter what if she go left, like you're going to be here for me. And a lot of artists don't have that. Oh yeah, that's Chris Jenner. Yeah. He don't give a fuck. He's going <laughs> to eat your ass up. He going to eat your ass the fuck up. That is Chris Jenner for real. Nah, I think that's dope. So shout out to him for that. And I'm glad that you have that support. And I think, too, when artists have, like, great managers and great teams, it allows them to just simply focus, be able to focus on the music. Yeah, because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people think that it's the artist doing a lot, I feel like. But an artist isn't going to get far without having a really good team Mm -hmm. and a really good manager. Because... Like, realistically, if you don't have somebody being on everybody's ass, it's mm. not going to get done. Mm-mm-mm. Like, and you're not going to get shit done by yourself. So, I was blessed. Yeah, yeah, definitely, for sure. I love that for you. Thanks. Now, if you could work with any artist, who would it be and why? I know we said Drake and Kehlani, <laughs> but is there anybody, like, you know, maybe some of the new girls that you want to collab with? Because, you know, it's, it's a crazy scene right now. Um... I really want to just work with all the girls. Mm. Like, if like, of course, like my dream collabs is Kaylani and Jake. But mm. I would want to work with all the girls. Like the bitches are eating right now. Yeah, I they love are. it. But it, they're all rap girls. Yeah, like I want to be the R and B girl that be with, with the, the rap, rap girl. Because <laughs> <laughs> all the R and B girls are just so eating, eating, so dainty. I'm not dainty. No, I'm not. It's not me. I mean, I definitely could see you being with them though. Yeah, like. I'm an R&B girl, but I want to move like a rat. Like, I want to sit in there. I want to sit over there with them. I don't want to sit over here. I want to sit over there. Shit. Who are some of the new, like, the new rap girls that you like right now? I know New York specifically has a lot, too. Like, the low, like, Lola Brooke, Maya the Don. I literally, that's, <laughs> that's like, like, what I was going to say. Like, Lola, Maya. Um, Kylie's dope. She's moving mm. right now. Flo Millie, Flo Millie's dope. She has her own type of sound going yeah, on. Yeah, she's dope for sure. Um, I love Lotto. Yeah, love rip me out the plastic. I've been acting around. No, I've been acting like they running it. They really bad girl. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. The rap girls are eating right now. I'm mm-hmm. here for it. So. Yeah. I'm down to collab with anybody that's fire. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think now, just overall in music, we're definitely seeing, like, more, more women coming together, working together, and it's making for, like, great content, great music, mm-hmm. so it's Everybody's like sure. a girl's girl again, mm-hmm. and I love a girl's girl. I'm a girl's girl. Yeah. So, my final question for you, if you could leave your supporters with one thing to remember about you, what would it be and why? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Who the fuck? <laughs> That's why I'm here. I don't give a fuck. If you don't give a fuck, you'll go very far in life. I promise you. And be delusional. Ooh, be delusional. I like be that Be delusional. One. Delusional will get you far, I promise. And some hard work. Don't give a fuck. Be delusional <laughs> and work hard. And you'll succeed. And you'll, you'll go far. You'll go far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you so much for chatting with me. This was super fun. I love your energy. And thank of course, you. Thank you for having you, me. Of course. And we're wishing you nothing but the best. Mm-hmm.